This mini PC has tons of connectivity with two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, two two and a half gig ports. You can even put dual SSDs in here. There are options for four core or eight core CPUs, fanless or fanned options. There is a ton going on here, guys. And this thing definitely feels about as heavy as a brick. So, well, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the iCool Core R2 Max. And well, this is also the iCool Core R2 Max. They're actually somewhat similar, but also very different. And if you don't know iCool Core, well, you might have seen a couple of our mini PC reviews that we've done with them over the last couple of years. And they have been famous really for making these devices, these little tiny mini, I don't even know what you would call this, this is smaller than a mini PC, but these like little tiny micro PCs that have a bunch of network interfaces and usually some pretty decent processors in them. They have taken the formula that kind of went into this and started to build bigger router boxes. And just to be frank, I think in this generation, they did a lot of the things that when we did our reviews of these smaller boxes, people had comments, they had comments like, Oh, I wish you could have a second SSD. I wish you had 10 gigabit ethernet instead of just two and a half. Uh, well, all those have been addressed in these. So I think that a lot of folks are actually gonna like them. Now, I do wanna point out that iCool Core sent us both of these pre-production units so we could actually go make this video, but we also had to go and augment the configurations with a bunch of components that we had here in the studio that we purchased using funds from our wonderful YouTube members. If you do wanna support STH and help us buy all the parts that we put in here, well, you can join down below. And before we get too far, yeah, guys, I have a terrible cold. I feel feel absolutely horrible right now. I'm just trying to make it through, but we do need a video this week. So hopefully we're gonna get through this one and uh, well, let's start with the hardware. Now, of course, in our hardware overview, we're gonna get to all the specs, but the first thing I really wanna talk about is the chassis, because these things are heavy. I mean, you can definitely feel some heft behind them. These are not like a plastic chassis or a thin metal chassis or anything like that. I mean, these things feel like bricks in hand. These weigh over a kilo each, just to give you an idea of their weight, but that's really because of this top section, which is an aluminum heatsink. So there's a fanless version that is really, frankly, I think it's really for the N100 version of this, so the four core version. There's a fan unit with two very small, I think they're 4010 fans or something like that. That one, you know, is really designed to go and push a little bit of air over this heatsink and cool it better. In terms of a fanless unit, I think that this actually, they did a really good job of making something that like works as a fanless unit. There are fanless units out there that have had problems. This is pretty good. But the other thing we should definitely talk about is size. I mean, this is the R2. It's definitely one of the pro ones because it feels pretty heavy. You can kind of tell. Overall, size wise, this thing is small. It's definitely designed to be a little router, firewall, virtualization box, whatever. Um, but it's no longer like crazy small. And just to give you some other sense of scale, this is the new Apple Mac mini. The Apple Mac mini is definitely a little bit taller, but it's also a little bit shorter. So I would say that they're probably about the same volume, but it's not necessarily like way smaller like this one was. Hey, that just kind of gave me a thought. Maybe we should do a mini PC review on a Mac mini, but well, let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, but let's get to some of the speeds and feeds because I know that's what a lot of folks are here for. Now, these have the exact same port configuration. It's really just the CPU and the fan configuration that are different. So I'm just gonna use one of them uh, to show you guys. So if you look at the front of the system here, you're gonna see that we have our two USB ports. Now these are USB three ports. They are not gen two ports, so they're only five gigabit per second, but at least you get two of them and they're type A. There's also a power button here. And one of the features that iCool Core has is they have the auto power on. So like if you have a power failure and then power comes back on, you can set this thing to actually turn on, which is always nice. The other feature that I think a lot of people will miss is the fact that there is a TF card slot here. So if you don't know what a TF card is, it's like trans flash from way back when, but it's basically a micro SD card slot. But if you say micro SD, you have to pay licensing. Apparently if you say TF, then it's not a big deal. So essentially this is your micro SD card slot and you just plug it in there and you're good. And if you want to, for some reason, you could boot off of this TF card slot. On the other side, there's really nothing, but on the back is where stuff gets really exciting. So you're gonna see that we have four ports on the back. Now, one of the challenges with these ports, and frankly, all of the ports on this, is that they're just not labeled. I don't know why. Please, every mini PC maker, label your ports. It just makes life so much better if you know, like for example, that these are five gigabit USB three ports and they're not 10 gigabit. Or also, you know, the fact that these two over here are 10 gig ports and then we have our two, two and a half gig ports. It's just way easier if you know what these are. Now let's talk about the 10 gig ports for a second. These are based on the Marvell AQC 113C chip. They are very low power. They have a low power five. They have the, uh, you know, multi gig speeds as well in most of them 
where you know they can do five gig or two and a half gig like this can. And so, you know, I, I think that it's actually a pretty interesting choice here. Instead of using something like an old Intel NIC or something that, you know, frankly might have a little bit more offloads, but might not be able to do multi gig speeds because it's so old. And also they use less power, which is always nice. So, I mean, the fact is that I think this is actually a pretty good choice here. Now, the two and a half gig NICs are the Intel i226Vs. So they are the newer two and a half gig NICs from Intel. And something I do want to point out is that these NICs, I would definitely go and check your OS compatibility with. Because for example, uh, as when we're filming this, uh, the Marvell AQC 113Cs don't really work in FreeBSD. So that's OPN Sense and PF Sense. Good luck. The other side to it is that the Intel i226Vs, if you're using an older OS, you probably don't have drivers built in for them. So the fact of the matter is, if you're gonna go do something like, you know, a normal mainstream, like current Linux distribution, no problem. On the other hand, if you're gonna use something that's nichier, like a FreeBSD based operating system, or you're gonna use something that's older, you're probably gonna to have to go do a little bit of a driver hunt. One nice thing is the fact that all of these NICs are not the same. So if you get a Intel i226 driver, you can go and find drivers for the 10 gig ports. Or if you have a 10 gig port driver, you can go find drivers for the two and a half gig ports. Now, iCoolCore has an image for an OpenWRT. So if you wanna use that as your router firewall, you can totally go do that. If you wanna run OPN Sense or PFSense, you can either go figure out how to get drivers or you could always run it virtualized in something like Proxmox and just use virtualized drivers so that way, or virtualized NICs so that way you just don't have to care about it. Now, the next two features are that we have an HDMI port, which you see kind of often. Then there's also a 10 gig USB-C port, which is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. Now, let's just say that you wanted to use this also to go run a digital signage, like have a you know display, or maybe you just wanted to have like a home assistant display or something like that. Well, you actually have two different display outputs because this is using the Intel Alder Lake N series CPU. The last feature that we have is a DC input, which you can have a 12 volt, 19 volt input, whatever you want. Uh, this is uh, this is a 12 volt adapter that comes with it, but it's just a standard barrel jack. Now, there is also a USB-C power delivery option. So if you want to power it like that, you can do that too. Okay, so getting inside the system, there are really two different ways that you can look at this. We're gonna show you inside the system, but I think for most people, all you're really gonna do is access these two little flaps right here. So there's one screw that holds on the flap for each, and there's one that's the DDR flap. There's another one, which is the SSD flap. And so when you're in here, you can see that we have one DDR5 SO DIMM. This is an eight gig DIMM, it's not huge, but you don't really need a lot of memory for a router. But if you're gonna run something that's virtualized, you might wanna put like a 32 gig DIMM in there or something like that. On the SSD side, you can pick between M.2 2242 or M.2 .2 drives. Now, of course, you're not gonna have the most cooling on the side of the chassis. So make sure that you pick drives that are relatively cool running. You're also just frankly, aren't gonna need a ton of performance. These two drives essentially like share a PCIe Gen 3, I think by one lane. So you get like PCIe Gen 2 by one speeds if you install both SSDs in here. You're not gonna get a lot of performance out of it. So don't spend a ton of money on SSDs in here because that is an absolute waste. On the other hand, if you do get two low power SSDs, then you can have things like redundant storage. So if one SSD fails, you have the second one, which is always nice to have. Now opening the system up, you can see that we have our SOC. Now these are Intel Alder Lake N SOCs, and we have two different options. There's the N100 version, which is the lower power, but it's also a four core chip. And then there's the Intel Core i3 N305, which is an eight core chip, albeit at higher power. What that practically means is that the N100 works decently well in the, uh, or actually really well in the fanless chassis. But if we were gonna order an N305, we would get it in the fan chassis. Coincidentally, that's exactly how iCool Core sent us these, right? With the N305 in the fan chassis and the N100 in the fanless chassis. But if I lived in a pretty warm environment, I might wanna have fans on the N100 anyway. And on this top section, we can also see that we have our two Marvell AQC 113C chips. And when we flip this around, we can see that we have our SODIM slot as well as our M.2 slots. There's also our Intel i226Vs on this side. Overall though, I think that iCool Court did a really good job on the hardware and also just being responsive to what people care about. Like, it's almost like they actually watch our reviews and say like, okay, we're gonna go start doing some things based on that. And let me give you a really good example. 
A lot of times people, when we look at like things like the top 10 mini PCs and stuff like that, they say like, oh, there's no documentation, BIOS, images, all that kind of stuff. Like there's just no support for them or there's not a lot of support for them, except if you go in our forums or other places online. But with the iCool Core folks, they have an entire wiki that shows you everything about these systems. That includes even how the PCIe bifurcation works. They also show things like how the 10 gig ports each have two PCIe Gen 3 lanes to them and all that kind of stuff. So I just think that the documentation on this is definitely a level above a lot of other systems, especially mini PCs in the market. They're still not to the level of like a huge OEM, like a Dell, Lenovo, HP, or Supermicro, any of those kind of guys. But on the other hand, they are certainly a step above a lot of the super bargain basement mini PC vendors out there. Now, in terms of performance, I know a lot of folks are gonna just wanna see this. So first off, you can run all of the ports, the two and a half gig ports and the 10 gig ports at full speed. You can also run the 10 gig ports, of course, at five gigabits per second, two and a half gig, whatever. These days we're just saying they're 10 gig ports and we're noting whenever folks can't do or whenever systems can't do lower than 10 gig. But the NICs and CPUs in here are perfectly capable of just pushing traffic out of the NICs and it's really due to that PCIe architecture underneath. Now, in terms of CPU performance, uh, frankly, if you care about CPU performance, get the N305. It's just a much faster chip. We've tested both of the you know N100 and N305 many times in the past and the N305 is just way better. In fact, the N305 is probably in that range where it actually is not a bad little PC if you just or you have a system that you just want to use every once in a while. Like, I actually think it's pretty good. We actually, a lot of times, run the display on the second set off of an N305 system anyway. So just to kind of give you an idea, like it's fast enough that we use it just because it's low power, quiet, and it works well enough that nobody really can notice the fact that it's a, uh, you know, a low power PC. The N100, frankly, um, is probably not the best user experience if you're trying to use it as a main desktop. On the other hand, for things like routing, and just you know, running a router firewall, I think that at two and a half gig, you're probably okay with this. If you do wanna run a ton of firewall rules or anything like that, then you're probably gonna to wanna to step up to the N305. Just having extra cores is always good in that case. Now, if you're just trying to pass like NAT traffic and do like pretty lightweight firewall rules, then the N305 is perfectly capable of doing 10 gigs at full wire speed, no problem. In fact, you know, if you go look at something like an Intel Atom C, I don't know, 3758 or something like that, which is an eight core, but much older cores, you definitely have enough performance to run 10 gig and you'll see those used in you know, things like PF sensor netgate boxes and all over the place because they are just frankly enough power to go and push a 10 gig port. Now the Marvell AQC 113Cs do require a little bit more CPU to be able to push than some like kind of enterprise NICs, but on the other hand, um, they're very low power, which is nice in a box kind of like this. Now the other side to it, of course, is that there are people out there that are frankly like, oh, I wanna go run like huge IDS packages, or I wanna go do like some like crazy packet inspection or whatever. And uh, they're like, oh, well the, I bought the N100 version and it's not fast enough. It's like, yeah, cause you need more CPU power for that. The N305 is of course gonna be better. Uh, and then, you know, there are people that literally will go and run applications that they should be running on like a giant Xeon that costs, you know, thousands of dollars and they're trying to run it on a $300 box and it doesn't work. And they're like, why? And you're like, well, because that's a low power processor and you're trying to do a lot of stuff. So uh, it really depends on what you're kind of running. If you're just running a basic firewall, then this is definitely 10 gig capable. If you're trying to run something that is, uh, you know, like if you're trying to secure a bank, I probably wouldn't pick this type of solution for your firewall. But of course, you guys wanna know about power consumption noise, so let's get over to the other side where we can talk about that. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and the noise. And yes, it's a little colder on the set and I have a cold, but I'm definitely wearing a sweatshirt over here because it is uh, downright chilly and I don't feel great. But let's talk about these two systems because I think that's more important. First off, this is the N100 system. It's a fanless unit. It's uh, definitely running a little bit warmer. I can keep my hand there, but it's uh, it's definitely actually kind of nice on a cold day like this, but it's certainly warm to the touch. We did run this uh, using StressNG for hours and it worked fine. So I, I don't really have an issue with the fanless system. I think it's actually pretty darn good. There are a lot of fanless systems out there that just frankly aren't as good as this one. Now the N305 system I have sitting behind me and that one has fans. I can certainly hear the fans and in our 34 dBA noise floor studio, we get up to just around 38 to 40 dBA. Okay, so talking about the power consumption for a second, the N100 version, we get about three to five watts at idle for the package. 
The overall system will run in maybe 10 to 13 watts at idle. Now, when we put it under load, we actually get the package power consumption up into that 10 to 12 watt range, which is means that we also have a lot more power consumption at the system level. Usually we're in the low to mid 20s in terms of watts for power consumption. Now the N305 unit is a little bit different. First off, we have two fans, which are the 4010 fans. So those are always using a little bit of power. And then the other side to it is that we also have the N305 CPU, which uses more power, has eight cores, all that kind of stuff. But at idle, the package power consumption is pretty darn close. We're in that probably four to five watt range. Now we get to the system idle power consumption. We're also pretty close to the N100 version. We're maybe a little bit higher, but still in that maybe 10 to 14, 10 to 15 watts, somewhere in that range. And so we're now running Stress NG on the N305 version, and we're getting about 19 watts at the package level. And at the overall system level, we're probably in that 35 to 36, maybe 37 watt range for the overall system. Now, something that's not happening is that we're not hearing the fans spin up anymore. So that kind of noise is actually maintaining a pretty level profile. Another thing that we noticed on both of these systems is that we don't really see a drop off in clock speed. The R2 Max pretty much just sat there at all cores at 2.9 gigahertz. And if you look at just this run rate here, you're gonna see that we get a little bit of variation off the three gigahertz but we're not really getting like huge variations in our core frequencies. And we're not like seeing like a drop to like half the clock speed like we see on some other mini PCs. So overall, I mean, the clocks really are able to stay at their maximum performance, which is really good in systems like these. Okay, with all these, uh, I like to have key lessons learned and let's start with pricing. So the N100 version of this is $299 bare bones. The upgrade to the N305 is $399 total. So it's about $100 more to get the eight cores versus the four core CPU. Of course, I do think that a lot of folks will get the four core version just because they're like, hey, I want a fanless unit and I kind of like that. Now I think a lot of other folks are gonna to wanna to get memory and storage. And frankly, some of the memory and storage options are a little bit more expensive than if you just go buy them yourself. So if you are trying to save every dollar you can, I would totally go and just buy my own memory and storage and put it in here. But I also think there are a lot of folks that are willing to pay a little premium if somebody's gonna say like, hey, we're gonna go test and give you a known good configuration in the capacity memory and also storage that you want. So I can kind of see both ways on this one. And frankly, we've seen low cost systems that maybe weren't designed as well as this, but that have had two 10 gig ports and two two and a half gig ports before. But I think that what these really provide is that these are 10 G base T and so you could also run five G base T. We just did a review of a Microtik CRS 304 and that has four ports of 10 gig for and go down five and all that kind of stuff too. But it's for only $199, which makes that very affordable. You could totally have a you know two gig WAN connection or a you know 10 gig, like a five gig WAN connection off of this as like a router. You could also have another segment for like Wi-Fi networks or public networks, whatever you want. And then you could also have uh, you know a main network with like all your storage back end for like a Mac Mini. Maybe you have a NAS or something like that on there, maybe another workstation, something like that, off that Microtik for a relatively low cost. So I guess the thing that's really different with this is the fact that you do get that 10 G base T, you get newer controllers, you're not using some kind of like you know, 10 plus year old ancient Intel data center chip, you're getting something that's a lot newer. And I think that that really makes 10G base T a lot more usable for folks. And the other thing that we're starting to see is that some workstations are starting to have five gig. Like for example, we did the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D review on the STH main site. And there we used an ASRock Tai Chi motherboard, which had a five gig network link, which you could either put directly into this or you could put into a switch like that Microtech. So I guess it's a roundabout way of saying that if you're running an SFP plus network anyway, I don't necessarily think this is the best box for that. But on the other hand, if you're running a 10G based T or N based T network or whatever, uh, if you're running a multi gig network, I, I, I think that this thing is awesome because you don't have to deal with those darn SFP plus to 10G based T adapters, right? You get something that is designed to thermally cool the 10G based T port, you get a new NIC, all that kind of stuff. So I actually think that these things are pretty darn cool and they're designed well with, you should definitely check out this wiki because I was shocked to see how good the documentation was on these. Hey guys, I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Sorry that I'm sick, can't help it. But if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching, have an awesome day.